Hello, uh, thank you b and thank you Olympus for inviting me to this year's Optics. Uh, very excited and appreciate the opportunity. I'm gonna be presenting a uh, talk that's a little different compared to what I've done in the past. And we're gonna be talking about discovering some new regional uh, treasures, if you will. I'm gonna be talking about uh, some of the uh, past 18 months that I've had an opportunity to find new opportunities. And for me, most of the time I've been traveling around different parts of the world. And of course, uh, we've been curtailed a little bit on that. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about who I am. My passion is, is in photography. In 2003, I made a transition to the digital world. And at about that time, I transitioned also over to the Olympus brand. And I've been happy with that ever since. Uh, you can read a little bit more about my bio at your convenience. It's on my website. It's on Olympus's website, so we're not going to spend any time on that. Uh, but I did want to mention what my primary equipment is. This is a whole cadre of stuff that I use. My two workhorses are the OMD EM1 Mark III and the OMD EM1X. So that's what I have in the field with me probably the majority of the time. So the question that begs to be asked is, where will I photograph? And you can see the first item on here is travel. And that relates to all of the additional categories you see there, landscapes, nature. I do a fair amount of commercial architecture, some photojournalism work, and uh, some people work out in the field. But uh, I mentioned earlier about the fact that travel is uh, what I'm typically doing. And the one important tool that in the past I've had to take with me is my uh, passport. Well, in the last 18 months, I had to retool how I looked at things and uh, come up with a plan to allow me to pursue some additional opportunities. Since uh, my boarding passes have been limited and the airplanes have been on the ground, I've looked at uh, a plan to give me some tools and some things to do in a regional basis. And this is true wherever you're from, looking at regional opportunities. My criteria was that if I could be within a tank full of gas of where I'm from, which you can see in the center there, it's the Lehigh Valley, that's where my travel is going to take me. This presentation is about these new discoveries that I've had found during the past 18 months. Resources and tools, first of all, I would encourage you to have it be specific to your interest. But for me, you know, I like to get out on a wild maps uh, uh, and different uh, apps that were very helpful. All Trails is a tool that I use a fair amount. Of course, everybody uses Google and that's probably be the one that I've used the most. Checking out different websites. And lastly, check in with a friend because I've seen images from people and I've asked them where they were, how they got there and so forth. So that has also been an incredible asset for me. Let's explore. I'm gonna share some imagery with you on places that I've been during these past 18 months and uh, encourage you to be thinking about this, not only for the present, but also for the future. And I'm gonna look at my travel a little differently as a result of it. This is uh, Lehigh University, which is relatively close to me. And the reason this is significant, I was able to photograph places like this, of course, without there being a lot of people in there. So for me, this has been a real treat in many respects, particularly in the architectural field of work that I do. This is uh, at Bryn Mawr College. Uh, I love this style of architecture, uh, looking at many different options. And again, the thing that's missing from these images is lots of people, which typically would be the case during you know, normal times here. This is in Bryn Atham. And again, I love this Gothic type of uh, look that you see. Uh, I look for different vantage points. If I can find uh, tunnels and things that you see here, I'm going to slap them on a wide angle lens and that's going to be my pursuit of that. But I also like to change it up a little bit. Uh, in this case, I had some moving clouds and I use what's called live composite, which uh, is, you know, in my camera system here, allows me to take long exposures without you know, burning out highlights. And, uh, you know, where the opportunities are present, uh, present themselves, I'll take advantage of that. Here's an example where it's just simply a long exposure, very cloudy day. The clouds were moving, but I also saw peaks of sunshine poking through. And again, that's one of the things where you can't plan, but you can prepare for it. And I saw this pocket of light coming and I knew that I wanted to put that in place for this. This is Villanova University. This is the lead uh, into the main uh, campus area from where the uh, students stay. 
And if you look closely, you'll notice there's a person in a very blurred fashion at the base of the door there. And I call this the dancer. And uh, she was just dancing as I was taking this image. And at first I thought, oh, no, she's going to ruin my long exposure. When in essence, I really like the fact that it worked out the way it did. Also on the Villanova campus, I look for opportunities like this. There was this puddle with that one leaf you see in the foreground. For me, I happen to like it best in black and white because it's more about the composition uh, as opposed to some of the color aspects of this. I also pursued some of the state and national parks. This is a Hopewell Furnace uh, down towards the central south part of the state of Pennsylvania. And uh, uh, amazing opportunities to photograph here. This is in above the one furnace area. This is actually a seven image uh, bracketed shot because there were such deep shadows and uh, high highlights. So I knew I had to capture it in that mode. This is uh, right near Hawk Mountain called the Pinnacle. I wanted to get the farm fields you see. This is uh, close to the uh, Pennsylvania Dutch country and lots and lots of farms and uh, great vistas. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I do a lot of wide angle and this of course works well for that. This is the Beltville State Park. I've been here in the past, but I didn't realize there was as many trails around the area. And there are these ponds and bodies of water, which from a reflection standpoint, if you can catch it on a still day, of course you can tell by the image that this is spring, there's some great opportunities. And as part of that, as I went to take my next step from there, I saw this uh, newt uh, on the ground. I shot this uh, in high res mode. So the detail on this thing is just phenomenal. Here's another uh, part of that Beltsville State Park. Yeah, if you look closely, you can see the rope swing off to your right. Probably one of my favorite places in the outside world, if you will, is uh, Ricketts Glen. And I've been here before, but I've really concentrated a fair amount of time in, the, in this past 18 months here. Of course, this is winter time and I'm shooting uh, one half to one second exposures handheld. And with my seven and a half stops of image stabilization, I'm able to accomplish that. And these images are tack sharp. So different seasons, of course, uh, here it is springtime. I noticed the young lady on the top of the fall here in her red jacket, and I hurried to get in position to capture her. But my favorite time of the year is in fall. I made arrangements. I found a place to stay overnight so I could be there right to, as the sun was coming up before any crowds came. And it's just magical uh, for me to see uh, these locations. It's supposed to be the one park that has the most waterfalls in the state of Pennsylvania. Again, I'm using on average probably a half to one second exposure for these images. I just uh, think the fall here is just the, the magic time of the season to, uh, to capture these images. Here's a location called Bake Oven Knob. This is on the Appalachian Trail. As you can see, somebody placed the American flag there. Again, trying to get all of the farm country that you see in the background in this image, using that as a foreground element for this. Uh, another place uh, up towards the uh, Pocono region is Dingman's Falls. And this is a hike, of course, again, doing it in the wintertime that I went up to. And this is called Silver Thread Falls on the way up. Just a very narrow fall, but it's probably about 100 feet in height. But this is the actual Dingman's Fall. And this was a challenging image because it was in such a deep shadow and uh, great highlights again. This is a five bracketed image uh, in order for me to get the full dynamic range. So I mentioned about talking to friends and I saw some images from this field of uh, sunflowers. And for me, I like to take, uh, you know, close up, back up, get the, a little bit more of the broad base. And I asked him where it was and he was kind enough to share the information with me. So I took some of the conventional shots you see of uh, sunflowers, but I also asked my wife to join me and I, uh, brought along a step stool and I asked her to bring her red umbrella and wear her red raincoat. And I elevated myself to give you a completely different perspective uh, with the uh, moody sky that you see in the background. Uh, this is a, another state park. I've been here before and I really you know, gained a lot more uh, love for this place because it's just beautiful. This is the Naka Mixum State Park in Bucks County. In fact, the fisherman is off to the left. That just helps to make the image uh, that much more compelling. There's a spillway in this uh, park where there are typically uh, blue herons uh, looking for breakfast uh, at this location. And I have a series of images just from this one spot alone. 
And at first glance, it looks like I'm at the bakery here with a little bit of powdered sugar on these uh, rolls here. But actually what this is a series of mushrooms I found underneath one of the logs. Again, gave the illusion of, of the bakery, if you will. And shortly after I took that shot, uh, I saw this fellow moving by. I had my macro already set. So not that I had to worry about him moving too fast. I was able to capture him uh, right after that shot. So this is a uh, park where I knew I wanted to do some uh, nighttime photography. I got myself set up and there was a family off to my left. And if you notice the young fella in the corner there, kind of looking up towards the sun, I thought, oh no, they're going to ruin my shot because I want to do long exposure, star exposure. But actually in looking at it, I was very happy that the, they were there and it actually helped to enhance this image. But this is what I was after. This is a uh, right about a 65, 70 minute uh, live composite exposure with uh, the North Star obviously positioned right. And you'll notice the similarity from the previous shot because I'm shooting basically in the same location. Uh, also in this same park, I found these mushrooms. Uh, this ha they have a yellow greenish tint to it. I've never seen these before, uh, but again, just really like the, uh, the colors of this and thought this would make a compelling image. Springtime here is a great opportunity. Uh, I'm shooting ultra wide on this, uh, wanting the uh, tree in the base to kind of create a leading line into uh, the image here. And uh, this I shot with the uh, a new, what was new just this past year, 100-400, uh, uh, which is the 200-800 millimeter equipment lens that Olympus came out with. So since I can't travel to Egypt right now, I thought I'd find my own pyramid. And this happened to be right off one of the trails here. Uh, it's not publicized about this. And I think it's some you know group that uh, they do some worship here. And I figured, well, they wouldn't mind if I get a couple shots of this. So this is my attempt at my pyramid. So here's the alien, as I call it. And you've all probably been reading about uh, the uh, cicadas that we have here in the Northeast that pop up every 17 years. I caught one molting. Uh, which is just this freaky looking uh, thing here. And you can see he's coming out of his exoskeleton, as they call it. And I uh, just thought this was absolutely bizarre how this uh, turned out. So wrapping up, not going to make some this. This was a shot I just took uh, just a week or so ago uh, with the new 8 to 25 millimeter lens that Olympus just announced. And uh, very, very pleased with the results of that. So I mentioned I do a fair amount of architectural, commercial architectural work, and uh, I did some things down in Philadelphia, and a benefit for me is that I didn't have the traffic nor the amount of people that I typically would have shot these, of course, during the uh, winter months here, because the foliage is not in bloom, which I would not be able to get these images if they were uh, fully leafed. So uh, this actually worked to my benefit. I was a little more daring being able to get out into the intersections to catch um, some of these uh, positions for uh, these exposures here. Here's one that's a favorite of mine. This is a city hall. I've never seen it from this vantage point. If there's a puddle, I'm gonna look to take advantage of it. And I was able to find this perspective and you'll notice the cloud on top of each of that, uh, uh, both the reflective and the uh, main image. And uh, just a fun image, but about, 30 seconds after I took this, a car came through and hit the puddle, and that was the end of that opportunity. Fortunately, I was able to stand back enough that I didn't get soaked in the process. This is one that's not too far from uh, uh, New York. Uh, this is Sandy Hook. Again, uh, a neat place to shoot. There's, I guess, a couple thousand acres up there. Just an amazing place, uh, getting some of the uh, old battery uh, from uh, years past. Uh, just a, a, an amazing place to to walk around and, and look at. You're getting the theme that, you know, again, a lot of the places I've been traveling to are places that I probably wouldn't have done had it not been for the limitations on travel. This is Great Towers in Milford, Pennsylvania. This is uh, up above the uh, Delaware Water Gap region. Just beautiful landscape, beautiful gardens. This is actually uh, uh, the, the former Governor Pinchot's estate, and they built this portion of the building as a uh, playhouse for their son and uh, rather interesting uh, situation there. So there's a trail behind uh, this park and this is not on any maps that I have found, 
I found a new waterfall. And I think to some extent, the reason it's probably not publicized is it's, I think, partially on private property. But what a beautiful find uh, with this that I had no expectation that this even existed here. So part of the exploration is uncovering some of these uh, uh, new uh, opportunities. This is the Cutaloosa Mill uh, in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. I had seen an image of this and I knew I wanted to capture it in the winter time and with the hopes that the water wouldn't be completely frozen so I could get uh, the reflection. And uh, I was able to get that, of course, with a little bit of the blue sky and I uh, was pretty happy with the, with the results of that. Uh, this is in upper uh, part of New Jersey. This is in the Garrett Mountain Range. It's called the Van Slyke Castle. And this is, I've seen some photographs of the remains of this and I knew I wanted to photograph it. Again, this is one of those situations where to do it any other time in winter, you'd have some challenges with the foliage, but in this case, it worked well, and I'm using a small aperture in order to get that starburst. So not far from here is the Lambert Tower, and this I did this hike uh, probably a couple of weeks after the other one. It's just a beautiful location, and you can literally see the skyline of New York City from this location. That's how, how close it is. Uh, here it is from a different vantage point. I did some focus stacking here because I wanted to get the first start of spring of that flower you see in the foreground and yet have the uh, tower be tack sharp as part of it. So this is probably about a four or five focus stacked uh, image. And again, not too far, also in the northern part of Jersey. This is the uh, Great Patterson Falls. Uh, this is a, a national park in an urban setting and uh, this was my first time there just a beautiful beautiful area uh, it helps if you can catch it on a nice day and up on the back part of the falls that you see in the center here is uh, a segment here that you can see from the bridge a great opportunity you wouldn't know i'm in the center of an urban core with of course the way i've uh, com you know composed the shot but uh, definitely worthwhile uh, to check this out so I'm not too far from the Poconos. This is the uh, Hickory Run State Park. And I just took this just a couple of weeks ago. You can tell by all the greenery here, lots of photographic opportunities for this location. So here's something that's a little unique. I uh, know an artist that's in my area that creates these incredible uh, artist features. And you, know, you could do this anywhere. This is a daytime live composite. So I used some of his art as a foreground element, and these are probably between five and 10 minute exposures, again, using the live composite, where I had some color in the sky, and it just helped to create what I think is a very artistic, compelling image, and this is something uh, you, know, you can do no matter where you're positioned. As I looked at some of the opportunities, I saw these old train pictures, and I had a friend who said he knew where they were, was a graveyard of some of these, so of course I took advantage of that, and I wanted to photograph several of these trains and in a few of them I was able to get inside. You wouldn't walk through these because these floors are in such bad shape. You probably penetrate through in some of the areas, but the graffiti made for some fun opportunities and staying with the train concept, uh, uh, not far again in the upper part of Pennsylvania in Scranton, there's Steamtown USA, which I didn't realize is actually a national park. And, um, uh, there is some amazing opportunities here. Uh, even though the train is the main feature, a lot of times when I'm photographing places like this, I look for vignettes or different parts of the uh, train to uh, make the image. And again, here's a, another daytime live composite. I wanted to kind of hopefully create a little bit of illusion of movement to, with this rusted old train. And of course that thing is not moving. This is, I think, about a five or six minute exposure, again, using the live composite. Again, a fun opportunity. There's without people around, which actually worked very much to my, uh, to my benefit. This is the Strasburg Railroad. And I was just there just a few days ago, as a matter of fact. And I got there early before they technically opened and I was able to get into some of the train cars. And these things are just beautiful and amazing. Uh, but again, you have to be prepared for it with some bracketing because it, there's no lights on in here. So there's deep shadows and, of course, the highlights from the outside. So uh, put these together in post in order to get the full dynamic range. And again, looking for different perspectives. This is out in the yard area where, uh, again, lots of these uh, old uh, cars are around. 
So let me travel a little bit further down south to the Jersey Shore. Um, this is a location that's very near near me. I try to get down here on a periodic basis. This is a handheld long exposure, about a half a second in the winter time. And I thought, well, I'll go back there in spring and see you know, what I could do with a different sky. Uh, also about a half a second exposure. So uh, I will oftentimes go to a place a second time just to try it with a different approach and a different season. And sometimes when you get there, you're dealt with some challenging weather. And this is early in the morning before the fishing boats went out. And uh, I figured I would try to capture it at that point with uh, a conversion then the black and white. I just thought the black and white worked much better here. So there's uh, several nature preserves in the uh, South Jersey area. This happens to be the Cape May uh, Nature Preserve. And I'm using some uh, long telephoto. This is the uh, uh, 400 millimeters, which is an 800 millimeter equivalent. Uh, just a lot of fun photographing these. And of course, if I'm gonna find characters like this, I wanna keep my distance. So I'm all right with that. Uh, another one doing a handstand for me, I guess, just showing off a little bit. In South Jersey, this is Cape May. This is a, an old uh, shipwreck. Uh, it's actually a concrete ship. It was pouring cats and dogs. And I saw a pocket of light open up and I found a shelter that I was able to get underneath and uh, get some longer exposures. And uh, the mood for me just worked well in the black and white. So I've had the opportunity to shoot the new 150 to 400 with the built-in teleconverter. This is a thousand millimeter equivalent. Uh, and these shots I just took just a few weeks ago in the Cape May Nature Preserve. Just absolutely incredible what uh, I've been able to come up with on this. And at first I thought I saw a log floating out in this pond. Turns out it was this muskrat who was swimming towards the shore. And I saw the vegetation and I knew if I got myself positioned, I could catch him as he decided to have some breakfast there. But again, I'm shooting at a thousand millimeters here, hand held. Uh, this is a rookery uh, not too far from Ocean City, New Jersey. And uh, again, just shot this just a few weeks ago, also with that uh, 150 to 400, just an amazing piece of glass. Um, and with their newest announcement, as I said, the 8 to 25, this is a, uh, you know, I'm shooting high ISO match 6,400. I wanted to see the performance of this. And again, I've been very happy with, uh, with shooting the uh, high ISO. So there's a lot of rail trails around, and uh, this is uh, what's called the DNL trail. This goes from Philadelphia up to Wilkes-Barre, and there are amazing opportunities along here. And these rail trails exist all throughout the United States. And so no matter what part of the world you're in, I believe you'll have some great opportunity if you wanted to pursue that. Here's one where I put a telephoto on. I saw the moon, and this is not a composite. Uh, and I saw, you know, the American flag painted on the side of that rock up there. I thought if I positioned myself right, I could get that image in uh, one shot. And fortunately, I was able to do so. I live near uh, the Bethlehem Steel and also part of that DNL trail. Uh, this is on here. I have a boatload of pictures from this location. Of course, this is in fall. Uh, this is one I just shot uh, just this past week in a high res mode with the dew droplets on this flower getting ready to open up. And this is the uh, Delaware Water Gap, uh, not too far uh, above me here. Winter time for me is a great time to photograph. I often tell people though, if you see an image, don't forget to look over your shoulder because I'm standing in the exact same spot. And this is the shot over my shoulder. And had I not told you that, you probably wouldn't realize that I was standing in the exact same spot from the previous image. This is Cunningham State Park on the Maryland, uh, Pennsylvania border. The fisherman was kind enough to step away to let me use his fishing rod in the foreground of this shot. Uh, just a beautiful area worthwhile checking out. So let me travel uh, a little bit. Uh, and here's a shot if we were live, I'd ask you where this was. More than likely you wouldn't guess it, but this is in uh, the middle of New York City in Central Park. I uh, did a focus stack to get all the uh, tulips uh, uh, in, sh in tack sharp here. And this was shot just a few weeks ago. My favorite, one of my favorite places is St. Pat's Cathedral. And when I shoot places like this, as I mentioned, I do a lot of architectural, I like different perspectives. And uh, this is one that uh, I just really enjoy. I look for opportunities like this. This is inside the oculus on the mezzanine level. And uh, I, I thought the fact that the security guard walking down there just helped to make the image that much more compelling. 
and the brand new Moynihan train hall. This is definitely worthwhile checking out. Uh, got a whole series of images from, from this location. On the Chesapeake, uh, this is a fisheye shot that I defished. And in this shot here, I wanted to catch the boat as the sailboat as it's right between the uh, two piers of the bridge. Lots of uh, arboretums and gardens are near most of us and springtime is a great time to photograph these. Uh, I mentioned I like photographing reflections and of course nature, there's uh, abundance of opportunities at these locations and uh, you don't have to travel far for these. So you don't need a passport to get to many of these uh, locations. However, you do need to be careful and look carefully because that frog is probably about the size of a half dollar and uh, it's easy to walk right by and not necessarily notice them. But the landscapes in these areas are just absolutely beautiful too. And if you can catch it either early or late, uh, eliminates the amount of people. This is the Chantelier Gardens, just absolutely gorgeous. This is their porch area, of course, and looking for those uh, reflections. Uh, and right down the two, you know, 10 minutes from my house, I live near the Lehigh Parkway. And uh, this is a place where I frequent. And if I'm not scheduled to be anywhere, I'll look for opportunities. Here's a shot in Nepal. And almost, you know, almost in the same location, went back in winter with some snow and tried to replicate what I did in the previous slide. So again, as I mentioned, try to get back. And again, it's an easy thing to do if it's a place that you have uh, close by. This past winter, this is a beautiful early morning uh, shot uh, in that same Lehigh Parkway. Let me uh, just share a couple quick images here of some of the assignments I've been doing during the past 18 months for clients. This is a, an eatery that's getting ready to open up. Uh, you know, they all wanted this uh, post COVID. And uh, so all this new renovations I've been photographing for clients like this. This is a new uh, interior bar restaurant area. Further north, I'm doing what is being converted, a, a converted seminary that uh, is going to be a wedding venue and uh, getting all of the imagery, you know, before they start the renovation of the project, again, utilizing some long exposures. So with that being said, it is time to get out of town. Let me share with you just a couple of the images of places that I typically like to go. This is the Atacama Desert in South America, a very favorite place of mine. Havana, I love the architecture and the colors uh, here. This is, uh, of course, uh, uh, in India, uh, a favorite place of mine. This is probably the one country I travel the most, uh, Taj Mahal, everybody knows this location. This is Rajasthan. I was there just pre-COVID, uh, great place. Bhutan is just lovely beyond uh, any expectation I had. This is uh, Morocco. Beautiful, beautiful part of the world. If you have the chance, you should see this. Uh, Costa Rica, uh, Mongolia. I'm in the westernmost part of uh, Mongolia. And Iceland is a, is a great favorite spot of mine. Looking forward to getting back and uh, really enjoy Norway. This is the Lofoten Islands. So with that being said, my friend and I here want to say thank you. A special thank you to Olympus. And for sponsoring me and b &H for allowing me to make this presentation to you. So the one thing, if I can leave you with a takeaway is don't feel you need to travel far because there are so many treasures that we have all within one tank full of gas. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.